Let me share with you five Cubase mixing automation tips you need to know about. Okay, so let me share with you those five Cubase mixing automation tips. Now, automation is something very important when mixing. I work with automation every time that I mix. Like, I would say 98% of the time I mix a song, I'm gonna have some automation in my mix session. Automation is gonna add more excitement to your mixes. Um, it's gonna give you way more options to make your, uh, your mix sound better and be more dynamic and so on. You know, So automation is an important part of the mixing process, in my opinion. And those tools that we have in Cubase are amazing automation tools. And that's why I wanted to uh, share with you those mixing automation tips that we have in Cubase. Some will be accessible from any versions of Cubase and some for the pro version of Cubase. Note that I have also the ultimate guide to Cubase, a premium course. If you want to know more about Cubase and all those different features that we have in this amazing DAW, I'm going to leave the link below. And if you stick around watching this video, at some point in the video, I'm going to share with you a coupon code so you can get yourself 15% off. If you want to purchase the ultimate guide to Cubase, the link is down below and the promo code is somewhere in the video. All right, so let's start with tip number one. Copy automation from one track to another. Okay, so this is something very practical if you wanna just uh, uh, take some automation and copy that on the same channel, on the same track, or on another track. So let me show you how that works. Uh, there's a few things you can do here. So let's, uh, for example, uh, say that I wanna copy that automation right here. I'm just gonna click on Control or Command C, and uh, you know, by using the object selection tool, I can just bring the playhead on the same channel let's say I want to copy that automation somewhere else on the same channel I bring the playhead to the location where I want to copy that automation and then just click on Control or command V to copy uh, and paste that automation that I just selected here that simple and if I want to just do the same by copying that same automation on another channel so this is a volume automation that I have here uh, let's do the same thing copy like uh, clicking on Control or command C so if I want to copy that automation automation on this lane. I'm just going to select the uh, automation lane, click on command or control V, and there you go. Now I have it on another uh, channel where the playhead is. Uh, now, if I want to do this uh, like on the same location, okay, as my first automation. So let's say I want to just copy that whole automation on the channel below. Uh, what I'm going to do, instead of using the object selection tool, I'm going to use the range selection tool right here. And I'm going to select the automation I want to copy over to the other channel uh, below at the same location. So I'm going to click again on the command or control C and I'm going to select the automation lane from the other channel and I'm just gonna click on Control V. It doesn't matter where my playhead is, okay? I just need to select the other automation lane from another channel and that's it, you know? So this is a very fast way to copy and paste some automation from one channel to the other, especially when you wanna do this on the same location. In that case, the range selection tool is very useful. Now to tip number two, trim automation. This is actually very cool. So, okay, now if I look at this channel uh, and I wanna bring the uh, fader up, you know, so I wanna bring the general volume of this fader up, uh, the problem that I have is that it's not gonna do it uh, because it is linked to that volume automation that is already on this channel. So what I'm gonna need to do is to bring all of those automation points up in that case. So what I can do is just to bring them up and down manually, you know, you select all of your automation points with the object selection tool and you just bring that up and down. Now, if you want to lock uh, those points up, you know, so you don't go sideways, uh, just select your points, uh, click and uh, keep your finger on the command or control. So this way it's going to lock itself in and you're going to be able to go up or down. So that is one way to do it. I actually don't do that a lot. So what I'm going to usually do on my side, if I only need to bring those uh, like, like that section up uh, a bit louder, I'm just going to select all of my automation points and go up uh, to the value section on the top of my window. Um, and I'm just gonna bring the value up by a bit. And I can do so with the scroll of my mouse, which is very practical, I, or I can actually enter a specific value if I want to. Um, and very, very useful, very fast. And I can do the same if I want to move those automation points uh, sideways, okay? I can go to start right here, the, the start value. And again, just click 
and drag down or up and that will move left or right uh, that selection. That can also be moved manually. You know, if I select all of those points and I bring my, uh, my cursor to the bottom of that selection, you will see that the, uh, the arrow of the cursor is going to change for a hand icon. And from this point on, I can just move things around left and right. Okay, so that is uh, very cool, pretty practical actually. What I'm going to do now is to select all of my automation points and I'm going to bring my cursor anywhere on the top of this selection and I'm going to be able to trim up and down those automation points. If I keep uh, my cursor in the center top section uh, of that selection, I'll be able to scale up and down those automation points and that will uh, trim those points in percentage instead, which is a different approach. But when it comes to trim up or down, there's also a very cool option if you're using Cubase Pro that is very nice and can be very practical. Uh, so let's say I'm happy with that automation, but I need to add more automation uh, on, the, uh, on the main level, okay, the general level of my channel for some reason. But I don't want to get back into that automation and play around all those levels, something that I can do is to use the trim mode in the Cubase Pro. So for that, I'm going to open the automation panel by clicking on F6 and trim is right here on top. If I click on trim, this is going to activate trim mode. Okay. And what that means is the next time I'm going to click on the right automation. Now I'm going to have a new automation lane, which is actually blank. Um, and you see uh, just behind that line and uh, that is a bit grayed out, we, uh, we actually see my original automation that I have on that automation lane. Okay, now that, uh, that automation is taking the back seat for the moment. And from that point, I can just add new automation. All right, so let's add some automation, some trim automation in this case. So what just happened is I added some trim automation, which is going to add an extra layer of automation, of volume automation in my case, because this is what I'm actually working on, on top of the existing automation that I had originally. And this is what I have. So if you look closely, we can actually see the trim automation right here on front. And we have the, uh, uh, the actual uh, new automation lane. If I actually accumulate what I did with the trim and I add that to the original, automation, uh, we have the result in the background right here. But we also have the original automation also that is a bit more pale, okay? So we have those three visuals. Uh, once I'm done with that, I have a choice of um, actually freezing that automation on the track itself and convert everything to one automation. I don't know if you follow me, but you will in a minute. I'm going to go back on my automation panel and deactivate trim, and that will bring back my original automation, okay, that I have here on my uh, automation lane. But I see in the background the what the trim automation did, okay? Uh, so what I can do is I can freeze that up. I'm going to go back again one more time to the automation panel. Uh, click on that arrow right beside trim. And at the bottom, I have two options. I have one that is freeze trim automation on selected tracks. This is what I want to do. Or freeze trim all trim automation in project, which is not what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to click on this. And now look at that. I have a new automation now. <laughs> I kind of overdid it right here on top, but you basically get the idea. So I'm going to go back a few steps and let's do that again and uh, go back to F6. And what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to activate trim and I'm going to click on settings on the settings tab and I have a freeze trim option. So uh, right now it is set up to manually, which is usually what I do, but I can also uh, uh, select on pass and or on leaving trim mode on pass. And what's going to happen is the minute I'm done with my automation, it is going to freeze it automatically and apply that to the um, like to the uh, the whole automation lane. Uh, so if I select that, let's try this out and do automation again. So when I deactivate the right automation, now I have a new automation uh, going on, you know, on this automation lane. Okay. So it's a kind of a uh, cumulative of the old automation on top of the new one. And we have that new automation. Okay. Which is the freeze version. I can also, let's go back one step again and do this again by selecting this time on leaving trim mode is going to be selected 
And uh, let's check what that is going to do. Adding some trim automation. Now, if I go back to my automation panel and deactivate trim mode, now I have a freeze version of the full automation of the trim automation on top of the existing uh, volume automation that I had before. And this is the new volume automation that I have. So I hope that makes sense for you. That can actually be a very cool tool that can be practical in a mixing situation. Now for tip number three, sync audio events with automation. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, now I have some several audio events and automation. So if I take this audio event or these audio events and I move them around, the automation is gonna stay put. So what I can do is this. I'm gonna click on edit, go down to automation follows events. I'm gonna make sure this one is checked on. And now when I'm gonna move those events or one or several events all together, the automation beneath it is gonna follow. Okay, and that is actually very useful. So again, if you want to do this, you need to go under edit and make sure that automation follows events is selected. And this way, you'll be able to move your audio events around. And if you have some automation underneath, that automation is going to follow, which is actually very cool. Okay, now to tip number four, plugin automation. This is something very useful that I use a lot when mixing. So I'm going to open that stereo delay. So let's say for some reason that I want to automate the feedback parameter of this uh, delay plugin. What I'm going to do is to make sure that the right automation is on. And I'm just going to start moving that feedback uh, parameter around. And that's it. Now I have some automation uh, going on that was just written down to the automation panel. Now I need to uh, go and check and open that automation panel for that parameter. Uh, right now, uh, volume is the uh, the default uh, parameter when I open in uh, an automation lane uh, that you can find right here. If you click on the lower uh, left side of the channel, you will have the automation lane, the show and hide automation lane. So uh, if I click on volume, now I'm going to have the list of all uh, the parameters of this channel and plugins inserted on the on that channel that I can play with and automate uh, with. And the one on top is the last automation I did on this channel. And in my case, that is the feedback uh, parameter. So I'm going to click it. And there you go. This is the automation that I just did with this plugin. So that is one way you can uh, get to your automation lane of a parameter you added automation on from a plugin. Um, some other option that you have also, if I go back to uh, volume automation. I'm going to go and open my plugin again. Uh, in my case, uh, I'm using a stock plugin from Cubase. Uh, if I right click on uh, this parameter or another parameter, let's go with the low, um, low pass filter. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to click on show filter automation track. And that will open up the automation lane of that filter automatically. Now note that this is going to work only with VST3 plugins and not all manufacturers uh, are, is going to work with this feature. Okay, so it, it does work on uh, Cubase plugins for sure because they're stock plugins. Uh, if I use UAD plugin and I right click on a parameter, it's not going to do anything, for example, or a plugin from Waves. Um, but for um, a plugin from Plugin Alliance, it's going to work fine, you know, um, and of course, Cubase plugins. So this is not something that will work on all plugins. Uh, but if it does, it's a very good way to open the automation lane of a specific parameter that you uh, you want to work on. Something else that you can also do if you have uh, the pro version of Cubase, let me just go back here to volume, is to open the automation panel and go up to settings. And there's an option here that is called reveal parameter on right. I'm going to select this one. And the next time I'm going to add some automation on the plugin, let's go with Studio EQ this time and activate right automation. Just pay attention on what that is going to do. All right, so now I played around with the uh, one of the, the bands, you know, by moving the band up and down, left to right, you know, so I'm touching a bunch of different frequencies and gain level. And I have those three panels, automation panels that were automatically added to my uh, my channel. Okay, so this is what it does. Every time you're going to touch a parameter of a plugin, you will see it open right underneath your uh, the volume automation or whatever automation you had on this channel. 
everything is going to be opened up and visually accessible right away without having to seek for it. So this is, again, very, very cool, very nice, and a very fast way to get to an automation lane of a plugin that you are working automation on. And this is for Cubase Pro only because you need the automation panel to access that feature, which is a Pro version uh, feature only. So this is how you can reach that. Now for tip number five, smooth the automation curve. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So if I start adding some volume automation on this channel, this is what I'm gonna get. All right, so this is gonna give me and create some automation points that I have here, and then it's gonna uh, recreate the automation curve. Uh, now, if I wanna add some more precision or less precision uh, to this curve, um, I can do so. So I'm gonna go back again to the uh, automation panel, so a Pro, a Cubase Pro feature, and click on settings. And then I'm gonna look for reduction level. By default, it is set up to 50%. If I bring that to, let's go, uh, to 92 percent okay and i'm going to do the same type of automation one more time with my uh, fader and look what's going to happen i'm going to have way less automation points to recreate that automation curve if for some reason i need more precision i can do so again i'm going to go back to my automation panel settings and add the reduction level to uh, a low number, so a low value. So let's go to six, you know, and do the same thing again. And that added a bunch of uh, automation points. That is gonna add way more precision uh, and make that automation curve more smooth, but also more precise. And that can be very practical if you need like a more precise type of automation going on, like I did right here. Um, in this case, it is very, very cool to work with more automation points uh, to, to have more precision on my automation. Um, however, you know, it's gonna be hard to manually fix that automation because there's so many points that you need to work with if you just want to work that around manually after the fact. So in that case, bringing that number to 50% is going to probably work better. Uh, so this is something that on my side I'm going to work with if I need to, but for the most part I'm going to keep that to its default value that is 50%. So this is where you can uh, look for that feature. Uh, just bring up or down the reduction level depending if you want to add more or less automation points when you add automation. Automation. So those are my five Cubase mixing automation tips that I wanted to share with you. But you know what? Let me share with you one extra one. Okay, so, um, and I'm going to do so because I know that people are going to ask me that question because I received that question more than once in the past years. And that has to do with the uh, visual that I have on the automation lane. We can actually see the waveform straight on the automation lane of of channel, which is actually very cool. And how I do this is very simple. Again, it's a Cubase Pro feature. You click on F6, you click on settings, and uh, you click on show data on tracks. If I remove that, you will see I'm not gonna have any data. And if you wanna see a visual of uh, the waveform, there you go, click on show data on tracks. And there you go. So this is gonna be it for today. So if you wanna know more about Cubase, you wanna know more about Cubase features like these and even more advanced features, you can look at my course of the ultimate guide to Cubase. And you also have, by watching this video, you have a coupon code that is gonna give you 15% off. So check it out, the link is down below. Share and like if you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, you can leave your questions down below. Until next time, take care and see you.